can be is something inscribed with the name of Yudan. Yudan. He was probably the son of Ishmael. He was probably the donor or the benefactor. This is the quote unquote seat of Moses. It is generally believed by most scholars that this synagogue would not have had a residential rabbi of any description. And in fact, rabbis in the days of Jesus were not what rabbis are today. They would have had itinerant ones, one of which would have been Rabbi Yeshua Bar Yosef Minatzeret, Rabbi Jesus of Nazareth. This is the seat of Moses where visiting dignitaries would sit. In Matthew 23, Jesus warned about the religious leadership of his day. They have seated themselves on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do what they tell you. Now, rabbis have tried to argue this day that even Christianity affirms their authority. Therefore, Jewish believers should stop listening to other people and listen to the rabbis, listen to them, based on what Jesus himself said. I've actually had Orthodox Jews try to tell me that. <coughs> well, the fact is, the seat of Moses no longer exists because they no longer teach what Moses does. Rabbinic Judaism is Talmudic Judaism. It began after the destruction of the first temple. We'll talk about that in Jerusalem. Hence, the authority of the seat of Moses no longer exists. What you have had happen in Roman Catholicism and in Greek Orthodoxy, they replaced the priesthood of all believers with a separate priesthood, people claiming special powers others didn't have. The theological term for this is Nicolaitanism, Nico, suppression of the people, a clergy class above the people. In the New Testament, leadership was functional and relational. Leadership is functional and relational. I function in this position as leading a Bible study tour because that is my function within the body of Christ. You relate to me as somebody who has that function. It is not a hierarchical form of leadership in the New Testament. Only Jesus is overall. Only he is Lord. He's the high priest. New Testament leadership is functional and relational. It is not hierarchical. Be careful of mono-episcopacy, where people have an autocratic view of a pastor. In the New Testament, leadership was plural. The pastor was the primus inter paris, the first among equals. With all due respect to some of my friends, the Moses principle is not a New Testament model of church leadership. A pastor has his function. A pastor has his purpose but it is not the biblical model of ecclesiastical polity. In the Bible, it's a plurality of leaders, always based on relationship and function, not a hierarchical system. Hierarchical systems inevitably lead to Nicolaitanism. Taken to an extreme, they lead to heavy shepherding, as Ezekiel chapter 34 calls it. It is simply not good. The Holy Spirit said, set out for me Barnabas and Saul. When a church gives someone credentials, when a church lays hands on someone and sends them into the ministry or the mission field, all they are doing is bearing witness to what the Holy Spirit has decreed. The church has no authority to ordain any minister or to appoint any pastor. Only the Holy Spirit does. He does it through the church, through the body, but they're the ministers of the Lord. They're not ministers of the church. Be careful of those who follow an institutionalized view of leadership, that they take what should be the ministers of the Lord and put them on the seat of Moses and make them ministers of the church. They become agents of an institution, be it the Church of Rome, the Presbyterian Church, or otherwise. It is simply not a scriptural concept. There's only one person who belongs on the seat of Moses, and it's not this one. If you ever see this guy, Jacob, putting himself on the seat of Moses, you have my consent, my approval, and my encouragement to kick Jacob right in his teeth. <laughs> Jacob does not belong on the seat of Moses. Jacob is just a servant like you. He may have his function. He may have a relationship where he functions in certain ministries that involve leadership. That may be by God's grace and God's calling, not by Jacob's design. That may be, but Jacob does not belong on the seat of Moses. There's only one person who belongs on the seat of Moses. That is the one who Deuteronomy 18 says will be a prophet like Moses. 
we need to take men off the seat of Moses and invite Jesus back onto it.